Hey guys, it's Carson Miller Tech here, back with another video, and today is an exciting day. I'm going to be unboxing my new Panasonic G7, and it's exciting because all of my videos on this channel so far have been shot in 4K on an iPhone 6S and an iPhone 7 Plus, so it's really exciting to actually be getting a legit camera to be shooting my videos on now. So let's get into actually unboxing this, and then I'm going to be adding in some footage from it also. So yeah. Okay, so now let's actually get into the unboxing, and some of you may be wondering why would I choose this camera over some of the higher end versions of the Panasonic cameras. My main three reasons for purchasing this camera over some of the other ones from Panasonic is because the first reason is it shoots in 4K. As you can see on this video right now, I shoot all of my videos on this channel in 4K because I just really like the crispness of it, and also a second reason why I bought it is because it has a movable touch screen and like I mean swiveling so I can actually see myself when filming a video which is great because with an iPhone obviously you can't do that and then the third reason is it has a mic in on it so I can actually plug in the microphone I'm recording this on right now into this camera and not have to worry about the onboard audio sucking and having to use like an external recorder or something so what's in the box obviously in the box there's gonna be annoying paperwork set that aside in here you'll find the actual camera itself right here, but I'm gonna set that aside and get to the other stuff really quickly. There's a camera strap, and it seems pretty small, but it's fine as long as it keeps it around your neck. There's the battery, battery charger, battery cord, or maybe this is actually to plug into the camera itself, I don't know. Lastly, a camera hood and the lens for the camera. This is just the stock 14 to, I think, 50 millimeter lens is what I bought with mine. As you can see, it's pretty small, <laughs> but hopefully it works fine and I'm probably going to purchase another lens later. So now the camera itself. The camera that I got is the silver version, not the fully black version, because actually it's because Amazon was out of stock at the time of actually purchasing this, but as you can see it looks pretty good. Here's the actual fully articulating screen which will be great for when I'm recording. So now let's just get to putting on the lens really quickly and the battery and taking some shots. Now let's just power it on for the first time. Please set the language. Man, first thing I can notice, I don't even know if you can see that on the camera, but this is quite a dark screen. I mean, of course I'm outside right now and I may have to adjust it, but it seems quite, quite dark, but we'll see a little bit later. All right, so now I just played around with the settings for a little while and I was able to get it into 4K recording and I also got the screen a little bit brighter, but as you can see, it's actually not too bright. At least my phone is not picking it up very well. To me, it looks somewhat bright, but out in daylight, it's not too bright, so... Now you're probably wanting to see some of the footage from this, obviously, so let's get into some shots. Now if you're a person who's just wanting to get this camera to vlog on, this is currently being shot on the camera itself, and I'm holding this at about arm's length away, actually a little bit less. I could even hold it a little bit closer and it would look okay. And uh, the autofocus is, it's okay, I guess. It's not the greatest, obviously. Definitely better autofocus and the light adjustment. It's okay. As you can see, there had a little uh, focusing issue, but um, I don't know. We'll see how this looks after the fact. But on the screen itself, 4K looks highly crispy and it looks very good. Now let's just get into some other shots. If you're not planning on vlogging. Audio on this is being actually shot in on this the shot, I was just talking about how the audio from the camera is what I'm using on that video right there. But the audio actually turned out to be terrible. 
So I'm not actually going to play the rest of this clip because it's really bad in audio. So uh, if you're planning on using this camera and not buying an external mic, then uh, you might want to watch out. Okay, so I've been taking some photos now for quite some time, for about 20 minutes. And the photos are actually looking really good. And the one thing that I like the most about this camera is that the bokeh around the photo, like the blur looks amazing when actually shooting photos with it and it also looks pretty good on video as you can see right now it's not really i mean there there's quite some blur behind me as you can see with the pictures of marley that looked quite good and uh yeah the one downside that i really do not like about this camera though is something when you're actually taking a photo i've noticed that a couple of times when i'm actually taking a photo and looking through the viewfinder that my nose happens to hit the touch screen and focuses the focus point somewhere else and so that becomes very annoying and there really isn't like anywhere in settings that I've found that you can actually change that other than just turning off the screen altogether which is dumb I feel like when it senses that you're looking through the viewfinder that it should automatically just shut off the screen and you shouldn't be able to tap the screen at all to focus. So that's one major downside that I've noticed so far. But besides that, everything else has been looking really good. Even the autofocus, as I said in the beginning, it wasn't really that great. I mean, I don't know. It's okay. It's not the fastest in the world, but it focuses eventually. <laughs> well, it's supposed to. Now it's not. What is it doing? There we go. It's focused now. Yeah, so I mean, it's a budget 4K camera, so I mean, you get what you pay for. So, uh, here I'm walking through some wind right now. I'm going to see how well this camera puts up with the wind. The wind reduction setting that I have it on currently is just standard, not extra or whatever else there is. So, uh, see how it sounds in post, but everything about this camera I really, really enjoy. So, if you are looking for a camera, that is budget and also shoots in 4k and looks really good with pictures i would highly highly suggest this it was a little bit over 500 dollars and yeah it works very very well okay so a couple of specs for this camera it is a micro four thirds camera and surprisingly it is actually very light i don't know the specific weight but the specific weight is going to be right here and it's actually very, very light, especially for like vlogging. If you're a vlogger and you plan on vlogging with this camera, it is quite light and very easy to handle when actually picking it up. Also, one thing that you may not know is that this is actually a mirrorless camera. It has no mirrors in it at all. So that makes it very, very nice. And that's also what makes the 4K look much better because it is actually mirrorless. So yeah. Now lastly, probably one of the coolest things on like the top five coolest things about this camera is that it has five axis in body image stabilization. So if you wanna plan on like Casey Neistat vlogging and going like on runs and stuff like that, like I am right now, then the image should look pretty steady even when running. Like I am honestly like moving the camera quite a bit right now and it looks pretty good on the screen. I don't know how it looks on the computer, but you could see during this so yeah that's one more cool thing about this but yes I'm wearing some different glasses and a different shirt because this is a completely different day but I just wanted to let you guys know that the autofocus issue was actually because of some system settings that I was able to change and now as you can see the focusing is actually a little bit better hold on so like if I zoom in it's able to focus much quicker and say if I'm looking at something else maybe like I don't know these bushes See, it's able to focus much faster than previously. And I just wanted to share with you guys what settings I actually changed in order to get this autofocus faster. So if you plan on getting this camera yourself, maybe you can fix this. So here is how I changed it. You're gonna have to go into settings by going to menu. And then the first thing that you're gonna do is on this motion picture tab, I changed the continuous autofocus to on. I believe that was off before previously, which is kind of strange. Then after that, you're gonna go into the custom tab, which is the little wrench with the C. And I turned the shutter autofocus, I have that to on. I have quick autofocus turned on, eye sensor autofocus turned on, 
pinpoint autofocus time to short. That was previously set at mid. I also have autofocus assist lamp on, which is actually this little light on the camera that shines out a light that helps autofocus when in darker environments. And then that is it for settings. The one more thing that I have set is make sure on your camera itself that you have this on AFS slash AFF. And then also under function two, you can select the type of autofocus you want. I found the one that's really nice for tracking face is actually this tracking one right here and you lock it on your face and then that works pretty well. But if you want full area autofocus, then you can turn on 49 area and that's what I've been filming on since I figured this out. And since then, now it works much, much better at autofocusing. So here's some more uh, testing of this in-body image stabilization. Looks shaking the camera right now just to simulate moving the camera around some. Here's a uh, new friend here, found this horse. <laughs> just kidding, didn't find, but it's my neighbor's horse and he or she's pretty nice, except for just trying to bite my shoulder there. <laughs> okay then, horse, you do you. You make for some good image capture. There's some other ones over there, but they're not as nice, so. So yeah, that's pretty much it on this camera. If you'd like to purchase it yourself, then make sure to click the Amazon link down in the description down below. And if you liked this video and would like to see more videos on this camera, also make sure to let me know down in the comments. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys liked it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe by clicking that button down below, even if you're on mobile. If you'd like to watch my last video, that should be up there and some random video should be down there. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. See you guys in the next video. Peace.